Back in 2019, Jeff Cap. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, watch Seagull's video? No, I will not be watching Seagull's video. What was his video? Is this Seagull? Let's watch it. When walked on stage at BlizzCon and announced Overwatch 2 would try to redefine the meaning of a sequel. Nearly three years later, I had the opportunity to get some time in on the release build for Overwatch 2 in a preview event with other creators, and I can confidently say Overwatch 2 is not a sequel. At least, not yet. On one hand, the game is extremely high quality. The new visuals, the audio, the animations, art, skins, voice, the, the list goes on. Everything in Overwatch 2 has that absurd level of Blizzard polish that feels so good. And on top of that, the new gameplay direction of Overwatch 2 is a massive improvement over the original. Combat has fewer ultimates, fewer shields, less CC, and more solo carry potential. These are all core design changes in line with a new direction and nudges the game closer to its roots as an FPS shooter rather than the shield shooting simulator it had become. Guys, all this I think the game is polished. He's right. Overwatch is extremely polished. Blizzard makes very polished games. You guys will never understand this because you're a fucking dumbass motherfucker. Okay, okay. What do you mean by polish? Is the game not having major glitches? The, the, the interaction, inter interaction between the, the you and the game and the maps and the other characters are very well done. The audio is well layered, well engineered. You know what you know what's going on. Is that the game's feel is polished? They've thought about what they could go wrong and they they fixed it and they made it good. That's what the game is. It is polished. This feels like a hollow Fucking shell, dumbasses, man. a fresh coat of paint that cannot possibly make up for the fact that this sequel has an extremely underwhelming amount of new content and it was supposed to be so much more. After this waiting shit, for almost man. three years, I log into Overwatch 2 and we somehow ended up with three new characters, a new game mode, and a handful of maps that's now launching as an early access live service title. Clearly this is not the sequel Blizzard had in mind when Overwatch 2 was announced back in 2019. It's a drastic shift for Blizzard, a company that once made its name by ruthlessly delaying all of its games and updates until they were ready. What's surprising is that according to interviews, the team has only actually been working on this version of PvP Overwatch 2 for just over a year. Before I that, the majority of its time went into building out the PvE side of the game instead. In an interview with Tech Radar, Aaron Keller said, When we originally made the decision to start focusing on Overwatch 2, it really made it so that both parts of the game had to be released at the same time. And as we were iterating more That's and more in some it. of the more innovative gameplay... Yo, keep talking about PvE. Yeah, PvE is fun. PvE is good. This shit is so fucking dumb, man. PvE is fun. For the PvE side of Overwatch 2, I'm more than it PvE meant than that it was going to take game. longer for PvP features to go public. Later on, he says, So we made this big switch. It has been a really fast-paced year where we had to do a lot of things to turn this massive ship that was going in one direction to go in another direction in order for us to be able to fulfill one of our key values for the game, which is to be able to continually update it. It's very surprising they've only really focused on the PvP side of the game for just over a year, but it fits with the amount of content that's in the game. The real question here is why has PvE taken three plus years of developer time? What exactly have they been working on? True. In order to answer those questions, I dove into some old developer interviews and streams from 2019 onward to try and figure out what the original vision of <laughs> Overwatch 2 was before business realities took over and forced Team 4 into this early access launch. According to Aaron Keller in late 2019, Overwatch 2 was built for those who loved Overwatch but didn't want to play a competitive FPS game. Overwatch 2 is going to fulfill that for them, where there's this game that people that don't play competitive shooters can jump into. They're going to be able to play the co-op side of Overwatch 2 as their main lifestyle game. Yes, yeah, elaborate like later, saying that there is so much to that side of the game, from this big story experience to this really deep progression system as they play through hero missions. It's this map that still doesn't respond to the fact that it's still going to come out first. But it doesn't make no sense at all. It's a massive tale to the game where people can play for years if they want to. And for us, as we started talking about the game in those terms, it couldn't really be anything but a sequel. He also said later down in the interview it's that a lead designer on World of Warcraft was spearheading their progression system for Overwatch 2. This interview was never really well publicized, I think, because most of the general gaming community viewed Overwatch 2 as a simple PvE story campaign. But according to this interview, the real plan was much more ambitious. Honestly, it just sounds like they weren't building out a campaign, but also a full PvE endgame so that people could play PvE Overwatch 2 as their main game. It would be yeah. more than a year after this interview before we heard from the Overwatch team again, but we finally got to look at Overwatch 2's gameplay at BlizzCon Online in 2021. 
Overwatch 2 ended up looking very similar to horde shooters like Vermintide or Left 4 Dead. It had tons of random trash units, lots of objectives, a wide variety of special unit it types nice. it looks like fun. bomb units, swarming units, flying units, and even the stereotypical hook unit which shows up in every horde shooter ever, but with the basis of Overwatch gameplay and Blizzard polish. It I looked did fantastic. Not think it was boring. They also covered well, and, progression and I'm being boring because there wasn't a lot Hero to it, missions but... were the main form of content you would play after the linear PvE story and campaign. Be after the two there were hundreds of, it, of them and tons of variations with a focus on replayability. You would play these hero missions to level up your characters, which would give you more talents in order to create builds for your characters. They showed off one theoretical build for Soldier 76, where his heal station followed him around, knocking back enemies, where he was effectively a snowplow. They also revealed the existence of damage types, like cold or electrical ah. damage with their own unique effects on enemies. And in a more recent interview, Aaron Man, Keller confirmed that by Winston leveling up, did, you can gain the ability to get equipment that you could use to become more powerful. Let's be clear. A game where you level up different characters, create builds, and obtain equipment to become more powerful in a cooperative, that's, that's, replayable that's a, that's PvE mode the developer said they want you to be able to play for years. How can this be anything other than the very first steps to building out a PvE live service game set in the Overwatch universe? This is remarkably funny because of the origins of Overwatch. For those who don't know, Overwatch Titan. was spawned out of a cancelled class-based MMO FPS called Titan. Titan. Blizzard yeah. tried making an MMO FPS work for years, and after people it was over, this. they this turned so around, they took some of the assets with a small team of around 40 to 60 people, and they spun out Overwatch in record time. Overwatch was one of the fastest games Blizzard ever made. It blew up and it became one of the most successful franchises for the company. They then took that success, Ability. abandoned the game, and immediately went back to try and make another PvE FPS game. It's truly absurd and I respect it. It also makes sense because core Overwatch gameplay lends itself really well to PvE mechanics. We have tanks, healers, and DPS. Archetypes that Blizzard has a ton of experience with after 10 plus years of developing World of Warcraft. True. I could only imagine the incredible boss fights and missions those kinds of devs could yeah, create in the Overwatch universe. Blizzard would have something truly unique in the space that plays perfectly into their strengths as a company. And according to the devs, there's a massive Overwatch audience that loves the universe but doesn't want to play a competitive shooter anyway. So what ended up happening? Guys, I'm going to agree and disagree with, with Siegel here. I feel like, I, I, I agree, chat, it's their, it's their strengths or whatever. But the problem that I have is that um, overall, when it did PV events, and when it, did PV, it wasn't that great. And I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like um, it's been like, uh, especially with, with uh, yeah, it, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. Happening to this crazy idea? According to Aaron well, they, they, they Keller, it. It PvE so for Overwatch 2 is they still what it we've up? always envisioned for the game. There's a campaign, oh, a AAA sure a campaign, with a linear story that we're going to tell through it, That's and there's fine. also a highly replayable mode with hero progression. But rather than keeping those until they're all finished at the same time and releasing them in a box, we would like to release those as part of our seasonal cadence for Overwatch 2. In other words, instead of playing an entire PV campaign and going through the PV in-game as it drops, it will likely be cut up and sold in seasonal battle passes. Even though Aaron Keller says it's the same vision, I'm personally going to have to see it to believe it. Bye, Telling compelling stories in a live service setting is extremely difficult. The only games that really come to mind that pull it off at a good pace are games like Final Fantasy XIV and Destiny. It's entirely possible Overwatch can do it as well, and I really hope they do. But it's also easy to look at this and assume the worst, that it's just going to end up as a weaker product because it has to fit in a modern live service game reality. Overall, I can't help but feel disappointed because it feels like the original vision for this game was so much bigger than that, and it deserves its own developer team and time to bring that vision to fruition. True. I mean, just look at this Reddit AMA response from Josh No, Overwatch 2 senior hero designer. He said he can't speak for everyone, but for some insight into the hero design team, we've had a significant amount of time dedicated to creating the talent trees. For context, there are about 40 to 50 talents split into three trees per hero, and each of these trees has a few talents that are a similar complexity to creating a new ability for a hero. Heroes in Overwatch usually have three to four abilities and a weapon, so prototyping a new hero is actually faster than making the talents for one. There are 36 plus heroes to do that for, that and then we've also sense. got nope. the PvP side with that all the 5v5 rebalancing, hero reworks, and new hero development on top of that. Imagine what these devs could do if they weren't spread out across so many parts of the game and could just focus on PvE or PvP. 
To be it clear. does make sense in terms of, uh, of theorizing and making the abilities. When it comes down to production, though, this, the, the voice lines, the animations, the interactions, uh, the, the, I mean, it's, it's a I crazy I fully amount, realize though. that it's entirely possible this theoretical Overwatch PV side of the game could have flopped. It could have been a total disaster to wait that long for the franchise and the business. But this is Blizzard we're talking That's about. Fun. A company that made its name by ruthlessly delaying okay. all of its games Check. and updates until they were ready. And in a single year of focused development, they've already done a fantastic job reworking the game around 5v5 and building out new characters while trying to keep balance in check. Chat, I want to watch. Um, I want to watch. Chat, guys, listen, 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 chat. Yo, this is X, X on yeah. the beat, yo. Okay. Boy, my voice as well. That is. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy.